Hey you, welcome to the final episode of my Dead Space 2 No Damage playthrough on Zealot Difficulty. I am Stud Doogie. In this episode, we're going to be combining chapters 14 and 15 into a single episode to bring this, this series and this game to an end. Um, I really have a, a better appreciation for this final chapter and its approach. Um, relative to the rest of the game because we get the introduction to uh, we met for the first time in the previous episode the Terminator Necromorph which is the one that cannot be killed and I personally think that uh, the addition of that character to this game and in this part of the game how it plays out we're basically we're just being chased all the time we're unable to kill this thing uh, is a pretty good mechanic for a game where we're in the final throes of it and we're pretty powerful and we can basically kill everything so having a character that we can't kill that forces us to change our strategy that forces us to keep being on the move um, I think it's just well done well executed and it also continues the trend that this game is really really good at doing which is maintaining tension uh, my first playthrough of this I found this whole thing extremely extremely stressful there is no moment of peace so um, in addition to the music and the sound effect and this thing just seeming to pop out of everywhere or anywhere uh, it was pretty tense you know pretty heart beating now you see this thing on me you might be thinking that I took some damage you know I fired fast enough that uh, that second shot that I did not take any damage so I'm keeping my word to you this is indeed a no damage run now these last two chapters chapter 14 and uh, chapter 15 I after many many playthroughs it just becomes a lot of fun it feels very Mario uh, Super Mario esque you know because if you played Mario a lot you know where all the blocks are you know exactly where to jump so it kind of feels like that even though it isn't because certain things are randomized but there are certain few beats in the first like minute and a half that are pretty predictable but outside of that um you know it gets a little hairy like check this out yeah that could have been fucked up that could have been the end of no damage run, but it wasn't yeah, it wasn't i knew he was coming i didn't know he was that close which is why I stasis instead of shot and um he wasn't in his attack animation at that particular point he was in his jump animation so i didn't actually take any damage on that one and then I like this little beat right here, right? So we got a little, little Jaws theme uh, that they've done for this particular part. And then we just go into the silence. The silence of the void. And by the way, uh, it takes a while for me to kill this damn thing. Because you have to wait for either the door to be open and for um, it to be in the right spot to shoot. So having uh, maximum air, not that we would actually need full maxed out air, because it's not like we're even going to get close to running out of oxygen. But it just gives you a nice buffer. It's one less thing to worry about, which is a reason to upgrade your gear anyway. I'm just letting the silence play because I like it so much. Isaac is such a such an idiot. He's an emotional, no immature child. He, we, whenever he does good things, <laughs> I say we. Whenever he acts like an idiot, I say he. But he is I, I am him, and you are we. So we're such idiots. We're holding on to this thing that's that's killing us, that's leading us toward doom. And it would be obvious that that is what is happening if we were um, just even a little bit emotionally mature. But we're not. You know, he's trying to hold on to his dead girlfriend like she's dead. We should have an understanding that none of this has anything to do with the real Nicole. 
but we're acting like a complete and total moron about it, you know? I don't want to let you go! She's already gone, dude. She's dead. Like, she's not real. So instead of being terrified and trying to get this alien presence out of our mind, we were like, Don't go, Nico! <sighs> so annoying. What can I say? I'm more emotionally evolved than Isaac is, so... I don't know why I can't kill this idiot. So I've said in, a, in previous episodes that the, the beam gun is the most powerful gun in the game, and that is correct. If we strictly go by the qualifier of a gun, it is not the most powerful weapon in the game. Um, there's something, another horn, which is a special weapon that you can get when you play on, I think it's uh, survival mode or hardcore mode. One of those modes, the one where you only get three saves total, you get that it's a foam finger, which why I don't call it a gun, because it's a foam finger. Uh, that's more powerful, but this gun is more fun. So check this out. Make sure if you're doing this, you wait until the stasis is over, because if we had ran up on him uh, when his bits fell apart and his bile exploded, it would have been right on top of it. So uh, stasis affects the fluids in the body. Now this bit always happens. Make sure you shoot before you see him or you're gonna take damage. Wow, I don't know how I missed that. I apologize. That was shameful behavior on my part. Don't judge me too harshly. So we're nearing the end here. And we're gonna talk about just one more kind of story beat that I re really only recently realized having rewatched this particular episode in preparation for doing the commentary. We're about to do some X-Men type shit. Some straight up Professor X type stuff with what's coming up, but um, we're nearing the end, like really, really nearing the end. That's our last interaction with the Terminator Necromorph. And uh, we're gonna finish off Tideman. And the finishing off of Tideman is how I discovered the Javelin as being a badass weapon because that's what he tried to kill us with and that's what we're going to kill him with. Um, so in my first few playthroughs I was using the Seeker Rifle as my kind of go-to weapon because I like precision guns. But the Javelin is just such a better weapon because I still get that precision shooting but it does the AOE, it does the explosion, it just does so much stuff. Yep. Yeah, I am not showing any mercy. I made sure I blew his freaking head off, douchebag. I told you, he was never a legitimate, tra legitimate threat. Now pay attention to something. We we're just standing around in this kind of spaceport type area. And we are going to do something real quick. The boss fight. Check this out. Thank you, Isaac. Now, time to die. What? She just said time to die, and he's still in denial. Check this out. We are still in denial. Uh, I know. I'm such a jerk. Whenever he does dumb shit, I blame it on him. Still in denial. Oh. Always asking stupid questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty easy boss fight when you have the beast, the beam gun fully upgraded. So, you know, we've been, I've been vindicated in all the time and effort that we spent stomping and breaking and selling and buying everything because we turned that boss fight into easy mode. Okay, so um, I just want to point out that I lied to you because Isaac's rig is blinking red, so this is supposed to be a no damage playthrough. <laughs> Clearly, I'm taking a lot of damage because it's all red. Um, but that's nothing. There's nothing we can do about that. I'm just pulling your leg. We did not take any damage ourselves from enemies. It's just just the way the game works. So here, we just destroyed the marker, and we didn't physically do anything. This all happened in Isaac's head. That's some Professor X type shit. We just destroyed the marker with our mind. Just let that sink in for a minute. Destruction of the marker with your mind. You must be a total superhero. 
X Men Mutant Badass. Revel in it. Just revel. Revel in the moment of your badassery. Okay, so this is the end. Uh, we're going to have the little thing where we fly up and meet Ellie. But this is basically it. And what I like about this is Isaac's resignation to die. He's given up. He's given everything he's got. We have been through a lot through Dead Space 1 and Dead Space 2. Isaac has suffered. But, uh, you know, our hero Ellie comes to save us, which is fantastic. We saved her. Now she's saving us. I think that's a beautiful bit of symmetry in terms of storytelling. Because, you know, we, they both met their needs in the previous chapter or the previous episode. I said there are two people that need something. You know, Isaac needed to save her and she needed not to be alone. And so both their needs have been met. And they, they basically took care of each other. And that's what it's about, man. People need people. It's the human conditions. It's part of what makes us um, human. We are a hyper-social species. So, um, I'd like to thank those of you who have watched uh, the series from beginning to end. I appreciate the the one, two, and three likes because that's all it takes. Even if just one of you got something out of it, it makes it worthwhile for me to make the videos. I'm going to play the games because I enjoy playing video games, but doing commentary and, you know, turning into something to put up on YouTube, that's, I do that because um, it seems to make, bring some sort of joy to somebody. So thank you so much. And um, I don't know what the next project's going to be, but uh, I appreciate you participating in this one. I'm so going to cut it off here and let the credits or the last bit of it here end. Thank you for watching. Um, yeah, bye.